USS Enterprise, Captain's personal log. My nephew, Peter, has been assigned to the Enterprise as an incident. This incident with the Klingons has worries me. What dangers am I exposing him to? I haven't seen Peter in too many years. I don't even know him. How do I make him understand this isn't a game out here? Freeman, get him out of here. We got real wounded. I'm fine. Any day now, Freeman. Okay, now you're done. Hand me a deep scanner. He may have internal bleeding. Yeah, he's Peter Kirk. But you treat him like everyone else. You got that? Yes, sir. Montana, go heal something. Freeman, you moved too long in the same place. Go help her. I've got this. Captain, it's a distress signal, sir. The Copernicus, a research vessel. We're in no shape to help. Who else is in the squad? There are no other Starfleet vessels this far out. We are ten hours away. That warp factor two. The Klingon ship? There's no longer an immediate threat. Neither are we. Inform command will respond as best we can. Just to check off, lay in a course. Scott, what speed can you give me? Cut. We've got a busted wing. I cannot. So Scott, I need warp factor four. I can give you a warp factor two. And not a wee bit more. Acknowledge. Just to check off. I had warp factor two. Captain's log supplement. We are still several hours from the Copernicus, and our distress signal continues to repeat. I have asked Mr. Spock to assemble a mission team. Nope, not him. Take Freeman instead. He's a medical technician. Captain, is it possible you're being overprotective? He's not going. That swaggering, tin-plated, stupid son of a bitch! If he weren't my uncle, I'd... You seem upset. He took me off the mission team. You are taking this personally. Yes, I am. He made it personal. He's afraid I'll fall off my bike again. You expect too much from him. He is only human. He's not human! He's James T. Kirk! And you want to be just like him. You are his nephew. I'm on duty now. You are in my way. Right. Have fun. Guess who? Mm. Mr. Sue. You wish. I heard. I'm sorry. I know how much you wanted to go. There'll be other opportunities. The burn. Ah, it still hurts? Yeah. Yeah, let me see.
Right. Could be worse. You make everything all right. Not this time. What? They put me on the mission team. No. Yes. You think he knows about us? I don't see how. He has to. Maybe he thinks I'm here because I wanted to serve under him. You're such... I'm here because of you. I know you. I got it. Um, will you marry me? How many times are you going to ask me? I already said yes. No. Here. On the Enterprise. I'll ask him to do it. Say yes. Of course. You know him better than I do. What do you think he'll say? <laughs> I don't know him at all. We'll do it right after you finish rescuing everyone on the Copernicus. Uh, I wish I was going. I want you to go. You've got to be brave for both of us now. Have I told you today how much I love you? Peter Kirk. I love you too. Alex Freeman Kirk. giant blue dwarf pear. It's beautiful, Mr. Spock. The paired stars are far more interesting as a scientific phenomenon. The red giant is named Lear, after King Lear. The blue dwarf is Iago. <laughs> Somebody didn't know their Shakespeare very well. A Russian wouldn't make that mistake. It is a metaphor, Mr. Chekhov. The red giant is a very old star. The blue white dwarf is pulling the fire out of it. It will take thousands of centuries, of course. Still a spectacular view. Mr. Chekhov, locate the Copernicus. There they are. That can't be right. Captain, the orbit will take them right into the streamer. They'll burn it up. How long? 18 hours. What kind of an idiot puts his ship in a self-destruction orbit? Perhaps we should ask what kind of circumstance requires it. Life signs, Mr. Spock. Indeterminate. There's too much interference to get a clear reading. Lieutenant Aurora. Still no response, Captain. Nothing. Keep trying. It's a checkoff. Take us in. Match your orbit and put us within transporter range. What the hell is happening on that ship? 